What's up, Guardians? It is Ebontis here. We've got a new TWAB, the one before the raid. The raid is Vow of the Disciple. I will be streaming that thing on my Twitch channel. Got a good group for that one. We're just going for the 24 hours and not trying to race. So come hang, swing out by twitch.tv slash Ebontis for my raid race. We also got a patch notes. I'm going to cover a couple highlights for that after I go through the TWAB because the TWAB will be live. Patch notes, just a couple main highlights I want to cover. So... This week, it's all about Vow of the Disciple, world's first race. What a wild week it's been. Feels like just yesterday we were announcing the Witch Queen, and now we're finding ourselves deep within the world's first race. They've got a little trailer for it. If you've ever seen a world's first raid race, very cool, a lot of fun. If you get a chance to jump into the raid completely blind, just do it blind without looking at anything if you are going to play for a little bit, because it's a really cool experience if you got a group. Just to walk in and see it. Fresh eyes is always very cool. Uh, if you're new to Destiny, I've yet to engage in a raid. This is the pinnacle of our in-game content. Players around the world com challenge to comp compete, decoding devious puzzles while engaging in heavy combat through multiple ac activity encounters. We're not just talking a few enemies here, but hordes of combatants clawing at the lives, away at lives and time while players race to the finish line. Now let's talk rules. World's first raid race for Vow the Disciple will take place in contest mode. This is a unique variant of the raid, only offered in the first 24 hours. Same way the kind of the missions have their basically power capped. Same principle is going to apply. Capping every guardian at a specific power light level to ensure playing field. We announced last week that the power fit target is 1530, as this will be the highest power your guardian will perform at at against it, the enemies you face. Here's the quick bulleted list for those who are in a hunt for the world's first. You have 12 hours from March 5th, or 24 hours from March 5th, 10 a.m. Pacific time, so it's noon my time. So theoretically, I have noon to noon if I technically go 24 hours. I hope it doesn't take 24 hours, but we'll see. Contest will be capped players 20 power below, 20 power below each encounter. So they say each encounter. You want to reach 1530 by Saturday to have a fighting chance in each encounter. Artifact power is enabled, good to know, but only provides benefit up to 1530. So if you're like 1525, but your artifact's like plus 10, you're good. But I do advise your weapons be as high as feasibly possible because weapon level does matter for damage. So 1530 is key. Uh, while these items may be used in other activities, perks and functionality on the following items will be nullified within the raid with additional negative impacts to power levels if equipped. Do not use the Iclos SMG, Imperial Needle Grenade Launcher, Grand Over... You can't use the Seasonal Exotic Rocket Launcher or the Wardcliffe Coil Rocket Launcher. Okay. Armor Mods. Worm God Caress, Peregrine Grieve, Suppressing Glaive, Artifact Mod. Additional items may be disabled if found, if are found prior to the start of the race. Stay tuned. So any of these things will, have, will be nullified within and additional negative impacts to power if equipped. Basically, put these things on, you're going to do yourself a disservice. So don't use those. Plan your builds around excluding those. Apparently, Titans are breaking a couple things. First team to complete all encounters... Loot the final chest and return to orbit will earn the title of world first. Note the six fire team members present upon the completion will be declared the awarding team. Any member who leaves during the early encounter will not qualify. They will notify it. You've got Vow of the Disciples. That's your colors for it. Very yellow and kind of brown for the belt and red. Very bright colors. Note art to be updated after world first completion. So might change a little bit, but still looks fairly cool. Uh, and then these are kind of the symbols you look at on the sides. It's usually going to be kind of a glimpse. Kind, I think it's going to be scorn, darkness. It's going to be something. We'll be watching as players progress through each encounter, ensuring a fair race among our participants. Any players found to be breaking our terms of service will be subject to suspensions or bans. Once we have recorded a fire team crossing the finish line, they'll spend some time validating a clean completion. Make sure everything's good. Uh, if you complete contest mode version of Vow to Disciple, so if you do it in the first 24 hours, you are going to get this emblem. So this is the basically spinning the wheel <laughs> kind of looking emblem. So that's the emblem. Contest mode will be the ultimate challenge for many, but for others, it's more fun and interesting. Watch the legends take it on. Tune in for the raid day tailgate hosted by Broman and Rec. They're going to be doing basically a raid race call out or stream. So if you complete contest mode for the Vow of Disciple, you receive a unique emblem to celebrate your victory. This looks like the one they're mentioning, but I've seen a different emblem kind of floating around there. So that's your jacket. So if you're looking to show off your participating in the raid launch week, you want something nice to wear on your evening walks, we have the Devout Disciple raid jacket. So if you finish it, you will get it. Special rewards will only be available if you finish the raid in the first week and then place your order at the end of March. 
Basically, it's a jacket with a hoodie. Kind of got a cool liner on the inside. And then I don't know what this little thing is, if it's like a shirt or pouch that goes with it. Uh, the seasonal pin. So this is the seasonal pin. This is something... This is a symbol we have not seen. What's up, Get Rec Labs? Um, that is what makes me think we're going to have, for sure, Scorn. Because they're all over and it seems to be the darkness piece of it. But we also got the preview at the end of the campaign for something bigger and grander. Which makes me think the pyramid ship and possibly the boss is going to be some kind of darkness related thing. Because this is the weirdest looking symbol I've seen for Destiny before. I haven't seen Scorn before. That doesn't look like Scorn. That is really, really bizarre. Which means, theoretically, we could have some very cool stuff in the raid. So definitely looking forward to that. For Vow of the Disciple, we'll be introducing a new pin for the raid. Got it for additional details. That's the seal pin. Same thing. So this will be the seal for the raid. Qualify players. Basically, you're going to have to beat the raid and do all the qualifications before December 31st. So you got like nine months to go for the seal. Outside of the race, there will be, just for the completing a single time, there's a pretty sweet emblem. So this is the, the one-time emblem is this one. I actually like this more, to be honest. So even if you don't do it in the first 24 hours, if you complete the raid, you're going to get this emblem. I really like this emblem. The 24-hour one's cool, and it's unique, so you're going to be probably one of the few that has it. But that one, just the unique, like, I love the array of colors, kind of like the spectrum through a prism. You got the little pyramid ship and the prism of light. That one's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Take your time, hang out with friends, enjoy the raid. So again, I will be streaming it. A lot of people are going to be streaming it. Wish us all luck so we can hopefully get some sleep. Feedback never ends. The Wellspring drop rates. We're going to talk about it. Okay. Once we've completed the Witch Queen's campaign and you've begun to engage in the endgame, a new activity appears in the Throne World called Wellspring. This is a fun six-player match made activity. In the Wellspring, players can earn four Throne World-themed weapons, each offering a variety of perks to mix and match for some fun combinations. Each of these weapons can be crafted, and some of these are required for progress in the evidence board quests from the Enclave. In a patch targeted next Thursday, we will be increasing the drop chances for both standard and deep sight versions of these weapons. So if you're trying to farm right now, you are definitely swimming upstream to say the least. It is not an easy thing to do. Um, but on the other side, if you wait till next Thursday, if you're trying to get that crafting stuff done, then theoretically, so, you know, Basically, farm at your own risk until next Thursday. After that, they should have better drop rates for both the regular and, of course, the Deep Sight Resonance, the red outline wep versions of those weapons from Wellspring. And those are the Fell Teradiddle Bow. You've got the Sniper Rifle, which I'm forgetting the name of. Somebody in chat will probably tell me that one. Um, you've got the Come to Pass Auto Rifle, and then you've also got the, the Grenade Launcher, the Tarnation. Sniper Rifle is the one I'm missing or forgetting. Anyway... Ascendant Alloys. As you get deeper into the crafting, you'll begin to earn unlock enhanced traits. And for your weapons, Father Sins is the sniper rifle. See, I knew somebody would get there. Uh, you'll begin unlocking enhanced traits for your weapons. These come at a bit of a cost. Each require Ascendant Alloys. Yeah, but you don't unlock them. That's the thing. These currencies are meant to be an in-game rarity coming from higher difficulty activities. That I get. In addition to the changes mentioned above, we'll be increasing your chances of receiving Ascendant Alloy through Master Wellspring completions, not just by the def difficulty tier of the activity, but also based on your completion level. This means if you do gold or platinum, kill all the champions, then you'll be getting better rewards throughout. Now, this is misleading, in my opinion, because they say you're going to unlock enhanced traits. You can choose an enhanced trait, but if you want to choose a different enhanced trait and then you want to go back, you're still going to have to pay that cost again. So it is not a permanent unlock. That is something I think they very, very much need to change because crafting right now, if you pay to unlock everything, you should be able to mix and match once you've paid the cost once. A continued cost on this thing really kind of hurts the main reason to like have your one god rule because then you're pretty much going to want two god rules so you like leave one here and then maybe over here so it's it's weird i want that fixed but there's only so much i can do uh gambit tuning while we had while we do not have any firm plans to share at this time the team want to highlight a few areas we're monitoring heavy weapon usage with heavy weapon being available from clearing fronts as you collect moats it's becoming far easier to have a tracking rocket or two in the tube prep for impending invader correct Gallahorn packs a particularly decent punch, especially with tracking Wolfpack rounds. Also correct. Invader frequency while tuning the general to general invader frequency has helped reduce back-to-back -back invades from occurring as often. We're still seeing some general feedback that can be difficult to handle invaders, especially during primeval phases. Primeval health. 
With the changes to primeval healing, we are seeing some reports of lengthy boss phases uh, thanks to some skilled invaders. All correct things I've heard. Again, Gambit, not perfect. Still in the works. Gambit is still a work in progress. Uh, Prime Gaming. If you aren't using Prime Gaming, like Amazon Prime, if you have Prime Gaming, go get all your rewards. Hard Light, you get the weapon. If you don't have it, you can get the ornament. Basically, it's just some very old exotics and co some cosmetics you may not have. So if you don't have it, go grab it. Don't forget your Prime Gaming. Just easy, easy stuff. Steam Deck. I did hear if you use Steam Deck and try to play Destiny somehow through like whatever, unless you're playing through Windows, it says you will possibly get banned. Uh, earlier this week, the help article went live containing information on Destiny 2 on Steam Deck. We'd like to provide some additional information on why running Destiny 2 on Steam OS and Linux is currently not supported. Our goal is to maintain a secure environment. It's always about the security and battle eye and all that stuff as it features both PvE and PvE combatant. Uh, dynamic world maintaining the integrity of our system security is a complex and long-term process in some cases it means teaming with partners like battle eye and following their recommendations in others it means choosing not to support platforms that could provide bad actors in ways of compromising our you know our own bungee developed anti-cheat security systems steam deck is not a supported platform and using the device will trigger our automated security system to see usage as a potential threat to the community Use Steam Deck to play Destiny 2 if you're lucky enough to get one of those things. Potentially will be banned. FYI, probably don't use it. Moths everywhere. They did drop a hot fix today. I'm going to go through those here in just a second. Known issues. <laughs> there's a few of these, so I got to make sure there's something going on. Glaive mods are not dropping from legendary engrams. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of those. Multiple seasonal armor sets are no longer available to equip via armor sets. Cool. No time to explain. Time portal will continue to shoot at defeated enemies. Not cool. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that definitely makes your gun a little less cool. Titles gilded in previous seasons are displaying guild count instead of the earned title. The Osteostriga catalyst shape cost is required. I did notice that. If you do shape your Osteostriga and you put the catalyst in, have that thing kind of how you want it before you put the catalyst in because it is expensive. Don't mess with that. Paragon Shader appears twice. The Okay, players may receive joining allies prompt. Gambit Ingram focusing cost is higher than intended. Okay, apparently take a breather and don't focus those. Just start storing them up. Uh, Dreaming Tokens. Yep, I've even got those on my Hunter, I'm pretty sure. Father Sin Sniper Rifle does not automatically enable its kill tracker after crafting the weapon. Wonderful. Aeon Safe Exotic, ga Aeon Safe Exotic Titan Gauntlets are missing a gold stripe. I think we'll survive. Logic or the logic exotic ornament for the lament is backwards when equipped. That's got to be entertaining. Uh, champion mod UI indicators on player weapons will disappear after leaving a rift utilizing the secant filaments exotic warlock legs perked. The reshaping the Enigma quest line can become stuck on the final step for some players. That's a bummer. Ascendant alloy purchases limit on Master Rahul did not refresh at the weekly reset. That's a bit of a problem. And in case you're wondering, after weekly reset, and you're like, I still can't buy anymore. None of us can, and it's a bummer. So that's broken. Maybe that gets fixed on Tuesday. Maybe on Thursday. That needs to be a priority. Then you got your movies of the week. Happy to see Dynasty in here. This is amazing. If you don't watch this thing, please, if nothing else, if you don't know, my name is Bife. Amazing work in the lore community. For whatever reason, for about a day, this thing got copyright struck and like kind of temporarily and then put back up. What that does is a YouTuber, though, for the algorithm, definitely shoots it in the foot and hurts it. So please give this thing a long view. Go just turn it on and walk away from the computer. Just let it play. Give the man a view. It is a butt ton of work in here, and we want to see bigger projects like this. So give him some support. Seriously, it is an important thing to do. Awesome artists, of course. Make sure you guys cover that. So much to do, so little time. Thanks for joining us for another TWAB. While I'm looking forward to the raid race on Saturday, I'm also looking forward to my sleep schedule getting back on track. Uh, this last week has been full of later nights than I'm used to, as many of us have been playing too much. They also had our Game to Give stream. Thank you for all for coming out for my Game to Give stream, if you guys were there. Um, probably the worst part was the dry scoop. <laughs> that was hilarious, just because like that one was dry. But the de bomb sauce ruined me for about 10 minutes. So that's a stream if you want to go back and find that clip somewhere. And also, we now have a Wear Twab shirt. I'm going to probably have to buy that one because it's ridiculous. Now, the only other thing I want to cover real quick is the patch notes because we do have those couple highlights to go over um activities so the main thing is basically if you had issues with the europa sabotaging salvation apparently that has been fixed 
in the throne world, they have fixed the chest farm for the deep sight tier three chests. They have temporarily disabled those chests, so you can no longer chest farm right now. Um, they said they fixed an issue, several issues that caused the wizard in the wellspring attack phase to mess up. That's supposed to be fixed. Um, light blade strike, the hive boat starts, even though people are trying to skip it, should be fine. Uh, they were fixed an issue where people were not getting basically the parasite grenade launcher for the quest. That's been fixed. Uh, abilities, fix the cataclysm icon, fix an issue where the titan's good. Weapon crafting, fix an issue where the crafted weapon triumph counts were not displaying the correct amount. Fix an issue where the mementos could drop from activities before players unlock weapon crafting. Not a big deal. Uh, updated crafting material name to now read correctly as drowned alloy instead of drowned elements. That's going to be something from the raid weapons, FYI. Fixed Enigma crafting perks uh, to use the correct currencies. I'm not sure what they were using before. Weapons. Grave Robber has been re-enabled for Glaives. So if you want to check that out, you can. Hunter Dodge can now cancel out of Glaive animations. Uh, fixed a bug where the funnel web was displaying the incorrect magazine values. Now it's not going to break your game. Um, some foundry weapons. Fixed an issue where some foundry weapons only have their source origin trait. Now it seems like that's going to be more options. The Palermody rocket launcher was having weird stats. The Fortissimo uh, shotgun had like crazy high magazine capacity. Alacrity, which is the origin perk for trials, seems to have been fixed. Uh, the Grand Overture, which you should not take into the raid, because um, apparently that's something that's kind of broken right now. Fixing the issue where Glaive melee kills did not count toward, towards Glaive kills in the player's match history, which is weird. Uh, fixing the issue where the Outlaw perk appeared twice in the first column. Weird stuff. There's a couple I'm trying to get to. Okay. Here's one. The Lorely Splendor Helm. This is the Titan one. This just got shot, kind of taken out back in... Not, not in a great place. Basically, what's going to happen, it will now create a sunspot when you cast your barricade. So when you cast your barricade, you also create a sunspot, which does heal you. But the difference is, it will still grant a sunspot when critically wounded, but it now requires and will consume a charged class ability cooldown. So now you're going to run, run around with your barricade, never use it, because if unless you just intentionally know you want to use it. I don't like the change. It limits it. It's definitely something I've already been playing around with today. Not a huge fan. Uh, they fixed the description of the perk. Sealed Ahamkar, Ahamkar glass no longer. Reload the Glaive magazine on projectile damage. High stat armor rolls have been added uh, as rewards for player difficulty campaign missions. Nice to see those. This is the other one. Fixed an issue where the overload rounds mod was not disrupting health. So now if you take overload, which is SMG and auto rifles against overload champions, that should work again. I need to test that somewhere because I was testing a lost sector yesterday and it was just not happening. Uh, fixed an issue where the reduce the damage debuff from the renewaled grasp exotic was only briefly applied. Should now affect enemies for the duration they remain in the grenade and also updated the description and icon. Bounties made some new Vanguard void bounties available not during void weeks. Yeah, that should always be kind of that way. So they're a little more solar with solar, arc with arc. Just make that stuff synergize. It's not that hard. Fixed an issue where void volatile explosion kills were not counting for objective progress. That's actually nice because everything explodes right now. New lights, if you are kind of picking up that meditation quest, fix an issue with that one being stuck in your inventory. Uh, let's see what else for rewards. Did some HDR stuff, which I haven't done because I keep playing on stream. Seasonal exotic ship did not have a source to drop from. I'm pretty sure I got last season's exotic from the war table. So that's new. Uh, also here, another thing. They increased the cost of pulling weapons and armor from collections to prevent farming gunsmith reputation. I didn't ever make a video on this, but I saw that you could do it for very, very cheap. They basically made this not really worth your while in the long run. 2,500 Glimmer, 20 Legendary Shards, because you would typically, even on an exotic, you would get back like six Legendary Shards and 500 Glimmer. So now it's going to whittle through everything a little too much. It's not going to be worth the farm, so don't try and do that one. I knew that was going to be a thing. Um, let's see what else. Various stability fixes and crashes. I still don't know if the memory leak on PC is fixed. If your game starts running low on PC after like five to six hours, just restart your game. That pretty much covers everything, though. I know that was kind of two different things. But the main thing is the world's first raid race is here. Starts at March 5th, 10 a.m. Pacific. So if you are doing that one, come hang out in anybody's stream. Check it out. If you haven't, if you're unable to jump in yourself and you do want to see it live, people trying to figure it out, 
that is definitely a way to do it. Check it out on day one. It's very exciting, very fun. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you got questions. Tomorrow morning, podcast for the last word, number 187. We will have Chris Raygun over on the YouTube channel. If you guys are watching this on YouTube here, uh, but if you're on Twitch, it'll be on YouTube. It's going to be 9 a.m. Eastern time. So some of you guys, it could be an early morning, but that will be waiting on the channel potentially afterwards. And then, of course, Zer tomorrow. Thank you guys very much. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch right here. Hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. Those of you who are YouTube channel members or Patreons, you guys are extra amazing. All of you have a good one. I'm going to go see Batman. See you soon.